Welcome to this session on Cisco Video Surveillance Manager's Math Server. This session assumes that you have already worked with Video Surveillance Manager or VSM as it is called in short and have hands-on experience with VSMS and VSOM. The Math Server is a new server introduced with the VSM 7.5 release. The purpose of which is to provide GIS mapping services. In a sense, it is used to store and serve mapping information for cameras and locations. This service runs on a dedicated standalone server, which means that it cannot be coresident with any of the other VSM services like VSMS, VSOM, VMGS, or Federator. The new map server replaces existing map setup in VSM versions prior to the 7.5 release. Existing maps must be recreated in VSM 7.5 given that we have moved on to GIS mapping now. Uh, Pre-VSM 7.5 maps will not be accessible after upgrading to VSM 7.5. A migration path is available to download the existing map image files from pre-VSM 7.5 versions before upgrading to 7.5 and all these instructions are provided in the VSOM user guide. Uh, there are three components associated with providing the map service. Uh, these are the map providers, the map layers, and the locations. Let's talk a bit more about each of these components. Map providers are services which provide the GIS map images. The default map providers supported by VSM are OpenStreetMaps and MapQuest. These are internet-based map services, so internet access is mandatory for these services to run. Uh, users could also select GIS map providers such as uh, Bing or Google Maps. Uh, these services are not supported out of the box, but uh, the user can obtain information from the service provider on how to use these services, such as the server to connect to and the user ID information, and can use them as part of their SASD interfaces. The next component is the map layer. The map layers allow for user provided map images with area details not provided by the map provider. So these are the maps of areas and the cameras placed on them on top of the base map provided by the map provider. For example, if a location map shows an aerial view of an office campus, additional image layers can be placed in the same location to show the floor plan for each building using map layers. The third component is locations. So locations now have GIS positions which link locations to that place on the maps starting with VSM 7.5. This means that each location can now be associated with latitude, longitude and zoom parameters. This allows for a much richer mapping interface allowing us to quickly browse to the cameras of interest based on GIS locations through our SASD interface. Now let us look at how we set up and configure the map server. The first thing we do is install the map server on a standalone server running the Red Hat 6.4 operating system which is a 64-bit operating system. We complete the initial setup of the server using the VSMC console wizard similar to the way you would set up a media server. But instead of enabling the media server, you would enable only the map server. So as you see on the screen, you would select all your network settings, you would choose your date and time preferences, your language settings, go through the wizard and then click on restart services. Once the server comes back up, you would be able to go to administration and services and see that your map service is enabled. Notice that the media server and metadata service are grayed out, so these cannot be co-resident. So once the map server is installed, we need to add it onto VSOM. The way we do it is through our VSOM web interface. We log into VSOM, browse to system settings, go to servers, and add the map server at the relevant location. The important thing to note is only one map server can be added per VSOM, and I've already have one added. So if I did not have one added, all I would do is click add, enter the hostname and IP address of the map server, enter the credentials of the map server, select the service type as map server, choose the relevant location and click add. As simple as that. Uh, because I already have it, I'm canceling it and you know, I can go here and check that all my map settings are very similar to the way it's done for the media server. Now that we've added the map server into VSOM, 
we are ready to start configuring our maps. The process for configuring maps is essentially a three-step process. We would first set the position of locations on the map by clicking on the locations link here from system settings so that the map moves to that position when user selects that location. The second step is to use the maps layers editor to create layers for areas of the map that contain subregions or more detailed map images. The final step is to use the maps editor to drag cameras onto the maps and layers we have created so far so that the cameras can be accessed using our maps in SASD. Let us look into how each of these steps are done. So I'm going to create a new location so I'm going to click on locations. I already have a couple of locations for two of my buildings in Cisco San Jose so I will create a location under Cisco San Jose called build SJC 30 for building 30. Now I can set the map location for this office building by clicking on set. This will ask me if the, my server is okay to track the physical location of my current position. So I would say allow because in this case I am very close to building 30 so that takes me right to the spot where I want to be. So I can move this map around, zoom in, zoom out a little bit. Uh, there it is, my Cisco Building 30. And that is how I would set my building position. So this is where the map would open up when I choose SJC 30. So I would just click set so that gets the lat long and the zoom parameters. I'm ready to save my location along with the map. Now that this is done, I can go to system settings, maps layers, and I'm ready to start adding maps. Now you see that there's a couple of groupings already set up. For building 28, there's a layer for the first floor and then there's a layer for the second floor. Similarly for building 29, there's a layer for the first floor and there's a layer for second floor. Uh, for building 30, there is not a published image yet, so let's see how we can edit that and publish it by double clicking it. So I, I can create a new group for this and just call it SJC30. This is associated with location building 30 which we just created. So we just choose that location and now let's select this on the map. So I can move this map around, zoom to building 30 and use a rectangle to position this on the map. Show a new pink rectangle and that is exactly my building 30. I could edit that by clicking on the edit layers button there which allows me to move it around and save changes. So I click save. I could have deleted it if I didn't like it but that looks like it's okay. So that is where I am clicking it and I'm setting it. Now the image associated with this is already uploaded so we'll leave it there and we click update. You would notice that this is now published so this is available as part of the map server. Now let's see how we add a fresh image as the second floor for building 30. So I click add, select the image which I already have procured, click add, associate this with location SJC 30 change this group to SJC 30 and then use the set button to get into the map zoom in to the right location and create a layer for my second floor right on top of what I already did for the first floor and then click set click update and that has created two images within my SJC 30 creating a layered information. Now let's see how we go and add cameras to the layers which we just created in the maps. So I would do that by going to system settings, maps editor, I would go to SJC 30, it does not have any cameras right now but you can see the map over there if I wanted to click and add cameras, for now I would just choose a couple of cameras from a different location and add it onto the same location. 
so I would just drag the camera and just point it to where I want it on the map to do the same with another camera and if the camera is right now running it would show green a couple of other things I can do from this interface I can click on the camera and set the orientation so if the camera was looking in this direction I would just adjust that and click set if this camera was looking in the other direction I would just click that and click set and we are done here so these two cameras are added into the maps layer so let's see what's happened by going through our SASE interface so you would see the grouping here this is another nice feature which is added as part of the new maps interface so there are four cameras in this area as I go in it just shows up and then splits the group apart this is very useful when you have hundreds of cameras to browse through so it will group the cameras as you keep zooming into the area maps or zoom out so now that we've finished setting up a couple of cameras on the SJC 30 location let's go and see how we view those using our SASD interface so I've opened up my SASD console there is the maps tab here in SASD so I just click on that there you go so you have maps locations for each of these settings so if I want to go to SJC 30 I just click on SJC 30 and these are my building 30 cameras there's a couple of cameras over there I just click on that and you see your videos so if I just want to close the layer I can just do that and this is the image based on the locations so again double clicking that will open up the cameras and I can view your view those cameras from there and this is how you view your cameras through your SASD interface I can go to my other interfaces this is how you open the layers up once I open my layers I can go and view my two floor plans by browsing up and down depending on the floor I want to be on to close this all I click is the close button and that is how we view maps using SASD thank you for your time goodbye and good luck